Hi everyone, Dr. Adriana Popescu here with you today. I am talking about brain spotting. Um, this is one of my favorite modalities to work with. It's actually something newer that's shown up in my world, maybe in the last three or four years, um, kind of right before the pandemic, like in that year, right before I was introduced to brain spotting when I went to an energy psychology conference and I attended a day long workshop with Dr. David Grand, who is the creator of brain spotting and was so impressed with just that day long workshop that I decided I wanted to do more training in it. And then I started using this technique with the clients I was seeing at the drug and alcohol rehab where I'm the clinical director. And we started and we specialize in treating trauma there. And brain spotting is a really excellent treatment for trauma. It also can be used for a lot of other things. And I'm going to talk about that, but primarily it's known as a trauma treatment. So I started using it with clients at the rehab as well as in my private practice and start and was getting really good results um, with helping people heal from trauma. So I decided to, you know, get more training. I became certified. I've now taken a number of workshops um, in brain spotting and its different applications. And we also have all our therapists at uh, Avery Lane, the rehab where I work, they're all trained in brain spotting. Um, we're using also at Firebird Healing, brain spotting is a primary modality that we're using because we've just found it to be so helpful. So let me tell you a little bit about it. So brain spotting evolved from another modality called EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. This was developed by Francine Shapiro gosh, I want to say maybe 40 years ago, um, at least in the 70s or 80s, I believe. And it was um, a technique that involved uh, eye movements and, and left brain, right brain stimulation. And it was specifically designed to help people heal from trauma. There's a large body of research supporting its efficacy. It's, it's very popular still today. There's a lot of programs and practitioners of EMDR and David Grand was one of them. He's a psychologist in New York. Um, and one day he found that he was working with um, a professional ice skater, or, or I believe she was a professional ice skater, who was having trouble landing a particular jump. So he had been using EMDR in the sense, not necessarily for trauma treatment, but for performance enhancement, which is an, another application of this tool, um, helping people overcome whatever blockages they may have to being successful at giving a performance. You know, if you're, let's say you were an actor or singer or something like that, or if you're an athlete, you know, enhancing your performance. There's a whole field of psychology called sports psychology uh, and Dr. Grand was working in that area with an EMDR. So this ice skater was having trouble landing a triple toe or some kind of jump like that. And as he was using EMDR with her one day, um, he was moving his finger across her visual field. And he noticed that at one point, her, her whole body, like, like her eyes kind of wobbled, her body glitched. And he's like, well, that's interesting. She's having this neurological response to this one spot. So instead of continuing to move his finger, because, uh, you know, originally NPR also had kind of you following, you know, a finger across your visual field. He said, let's just hold the, the, your eyes, your gaze here on this one spot. And for the next, I don't know, period of time, this whole torrent of, uh, abuse and trauma and all these things that she had experienced in her childhood with a you know difficult mother all this stuff came out and she cried and she emoted and all these things and felt better afterwards and the next day when she went to practice doing the jump she had no problem with it and never had a problem with it again so of course being very intrigued with that he started experimenting. He started deviating a little bit from the EMDR protocol and trying different things. And then he would have his colleagues um, who were also trained in EMDR experiment and try these different approaches. And that's really how brain spotting was, was born. And this was over 20 years ago. And where I think Dr. Grand really got a chance to perfect his technique is when 9-11 happened. So he was, you know, a psychologist working in New York City, and all these people had been impacted by 
you know, 9-11 and he was working with a lot of trauma survivors. And that's when he really got a lot of practice with this newer approach to trauma healing. And, you know, that's how brain spotting grew. And now it's in many countries all over the world, there's over 10 or 12,000 practitioners who've been trained in this. Um, and, you know, there are conferences and there are workshops and there are uh, Facebook groups. And so there's this huge community of mental health practitioners. And, and also the interesting thing is Dr. Grant did not limit uh, training for brain spotting just to licensed mental health professionals. There are coaches, there are other types of healers that use brain spotting in their practices as well and other kinds of healing practices. So that's really cool. Um, and how, how does it work? Well, so essentially what we do, if let's say if I'm working with, you know, trauma, um, I'm having the person talk to me about, and it doesn't even have to be really big T trauma. It can be little T trauma. It could be, um, I had a conflict with my partner, or I'm really upset about something happening at work. Um, or I'm working with some core false beliefs, like I'm not good enough, I'm unlovable, people leave me. But whatever the issue is, you get the person talking about it so that you can kind of activate the energy and bring it up, okay? And then once they, you can tell they're kind of like getting worked up over it because they have an emotional charge or they're starting to get, as they're remembering, you know, some of the trauma experience that happened, they're getting that fight flight freeze response activated. And at that point, you know, you ask them to check in with themselves and notice what's happening. So they might say, um, you know, I have my, my heart is racing. I have a, a lump in my throat. Um, my toes are tingling and I'm feeling really anxious. Okay. And then I will ask them to rate that all those sensations and emotions on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is the most intense. And Usually, you know, we want to work with a fairly high activation of at least a five or more, but, you know, it's not always critical to do it that way. And then what, what we're doing essentially is, I can show you here, I have a pointer, okay? And then I start moving this pointer across the person's visual field, and we're looking for the specific location where they feel all that activation the most intensely, okay? And it might be somewhere like on an x-axis at their eye level. It might be up or down from there. It might be kind of towards them or away from them. And the cool thing is we can actually do brain spotting over, over video, like we are doing, you know, like over Zoom, which is really nice because it allows me to work with a lot of, you know, people remotely with this technique. So once we've kind of found the activation spot, which is often how we'll do this, there are many different setups with brain spotting, but this is one of the most common ones. Once the person has that location, they just fix their gaze at the tip of the pointer. And as Dr. Grant says, you know, at this point we sit back and we just allow the brain to go wherever it needs to, meaning um, allowing the processing to occur, the focused processing. So there may be memories that come up. There may be emotions. Um, I've worked a lot with physical trauma because I've been in car accidents and I've had various injuries. I might start feeling, you know, different sensations in my body. Um, and essentially what you're doing is you're just allowing, we're in the tail of the comet at that point. It's like the brain is the head of the comet kind of leading the way. We're trusting that it knows what where it needs to go. And we, you know, the client and myself as the therapist are kind of in the tail of the comet being led. I really take a very non-directive kind of just supportive role. I'm not analyzing. I'm not having conversation with the client. I might be checking in with them and just allowing the processing to occur. And that can take the whole, the whole session. Um, it may take more than one session to work through a particular incident um, some people do longer sessions of brain spotting. There are some practitioners who will do 90 minute sessions versus an hour um, to really allow for time because it can take 45 minutes or more to really kind of work through um, a specific incident or memory. And especially if it's connected to other traumas, other memories might come up, other emotions. Um, but eventually what we're trying to do is get 
that SUDS, the subjective units of distress, right, the zero to 10 scale, we're trying to get that number down as close to zero as we can get it. We may not get all the way to zero, but if you can help someone get from an eight, nine, 10 to a two, three, four, that's gonna be significantly better. And as we talk about at the rehab, the difference in, in that might keep a person sober because what we find is when people get triggered, they have flashbacks, or they get just get emotionally dysregulated um, and that fight, flight, freeze mechanism gets activated because their amygdala is overactive and it tends to overreact to situations that are not really life or death situations. I've talked about this in other videos before. So, you know, when you have an overactive amygdala and you're constantly, you know, getting emotionally triggered, um, you know, you want to be able to and that's when people are typically using drugs and alcohol or food or whatever addictive behavior they've developed because it's a coping strategy to try to you know calm themselves down. But if we can help people calm down with a technique like this, you know, not you wouldn't be brain spotting in the moment when you're having the upset. You you could people can learn how to self spot, but because it takes a while, oftentimes um, we usually you know do it in therapy sessions where you have at least an hour. And in conjunction with the visual spot, the person, it's optional, but it does help. Um, the person can also be listening to this bilateral sound, which is doing the left brain, right brain stimulation that we had originally in EMDR. So it it's interesting because the music kind of sounds like you have to listen to it through earphones. It sounds like it's sort of going in one ear and out the other, or like that the volume's getting turned up in one ear and then down in the other. And it's stimulating again these parts of the brain where we might have trauma stored um you know there's a growing body of evidence that suggests that you know um things like trauma the things that we can't deal with things that we repress you know peter levine and besser van der kolk who are you know big trauma experts talk about this idea of a trauma capsule that we kind of just lock away somewhere in our bodies somewhere in our our brains, we lock away this information because it's too overwhelming to deal with at the time of the experience. And so that energy is still there and it's still influencing us, but we're not always fully aware of it. Something about the brain spotting and the psychedelics now, it looks like are doing the same thing, the psychedelic assisted therapy, which is why they're using it a lot for trauma, um, especially the MDMA. It seems, we, it seems that the brain spotting or these medicines are able to open that capsule up and give us access to this previously repressed material. That way in the safe environment with a therapist or, or someone who's trained in this, the person can actually experience those feelings that they couldn't deal with before and work their way through them. Okay. Because the way emotions and stuff work is like, they have a sort of natural life cycle of their own. I think of them as ocean waves right? Like they start off calm, they build up, they get really intense, they kind of crescendo, and then they flow. It's like the ebb and flow, right? And if you let the emotions run their natural course, that things will settle down. But in a trauma, what happens for people, it's like, it's like the pause button got hit, and they couldn't deal with what, you know, was happening at the time. And then, you know, all that material just gets stuck. A part of you gets stuck in the trauma. And so what we're trying to do with brain spotting and these other trauma healing methods is go back to that point in time and get the person unstuck. So to give you a real life example, when I was a kid, I was about nine years old. Um, I was in a really bad car accident with my mom and aunt. And it, you know, it came from behind. I couldn't see it coming. And I remember having what I now know to be a fight, flight, freeze response. I had a freeze response. I went into shock. Um, my system totally shut down. I remember feeling very cold. I was injured. My back was injured. I couldn't feel, but I couldn't feel any pain. Um, I remember being in an ambulance, but I couldn't speak um, because this is a survival mechanism, right? Like this is part of our, you know, how we're all wired as animals. Um, my body did that so that I wouldn't feel the pain because it, maybe the intensity of the pain would have been overwhelming to me and I needed to survive that experience. So unbeknownst to me at the time, uh, you know, part of that experience and the fear and the panic and the pain and all of that was still in my body, but I didn't realize it. So many years later, fast forward, you know, I'm in my late 20s. And I get in another car accident, again, rear-ended, 
couldn't see it coming. And I, in the moment at this point, I was in grad school. So I was used to kind of working with my emotions in the moment. What happened was the fight, flight, freeze response got activated again, but this time I started shaking and I remember thinking, don't repress it this time. Like you're strong enough to handle this. You have skills and tools. And I started crying. I mean, I'm still in the car. It just happened. I know I'm supposed to get out of the car and go talk to people and exchange information and get the cars off the road and like do things. But I was having a trauma response because my old trauma got activated and all the memories and the emotions and the physical pain and everything came back in that flash. When I, it's like that trauma capsule opened up again and all this material came flooding out. Luckily at the time I had tools. I knew how to do some breathing. I may have done some tapping, um, but I didn't stop the experience. So what happened was with that particular you know, traumatic event, I didn't have lingering effects. There was a little bit around driving past that spot. There was a little bit of anxiety around just driving in general, but with the tools that I had at the time, I was, and I didn't have brain spotting then, I was able to work through it. So, um, so if you, so this is kind of the nature of trauma and what happens when we are not, when we get overwhelmed and we don't get to like play the experience all the way through, play the tape all the way through, like I did with the second accident. Um, and even with that, you know, in doing brain spotting training, you practice with another person, another practitioner. And um, I worked on some of those car, you know, there, there were five car accidents that I, that I was in at various points. And my body still, you know, was holding and may still be holding, you know, some trauma, specifically whiplash injuries. You know, there's a lot of tension in the muscles. Um, I remember in one brain spotting session, I started feeling pain in that part of my back where I was injured the first time. So our bodies and our brains hold all of this energy and all of this information that most people aren't even aware of, um, but it still impacts you, right? It's still there in the background affecting you. So I really love this particular technique because it is so efficient at accessing that stuff that you really can't access with your conscious mind, your prefrontal cortex, you know, Dr. Grant talks a lot about how brain spotting is working with the subcortical regions of your brain, the more primitive parts of your brain, the mammalian and reptilian brain, because that's the part of your brain that's in charge of the, your survival mechanism. That's the part of the brain, um, the structures and functions of the brain that are involved in the fight, flight, freeze response. Um, and then there's a whole vagus nerve component and polyvagal theory. And we just know so much more now about trauma and how it works. And we're learning more about how these techniques that we have discovered through clinical practice, research is now growing to support the eff efficacy of these techniques. And we're getting a better understanding of how it all works. Um, so that's really, really cool. So I love brain spotting for trauma treatment. And the other thing that's really interesting with it is that as you bring the sort of the negative emotional trauma kind of responses down, there's this sort of organic thing that starts to happen where people start connecting with their strengths, um, their uh, more authentic or essential self or their infinite being. There's something that happens. And I remember working with um, a lady at the rehab early on when I was starting with brain spotting who had been through one of the fires, you know, these catastrophic fires we've had in California in the last few years. And it was really traumatic. I mean, she was li literally driving out of town and trees above her were on fire, you know, like really traumatic. And after doing an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes of this brain spotting, by the end, she'd calmed down so much that she'd re-experienced re the whole thing, but she'd calmed down and this like inner wisdom came out. This She had this moment of just like, I don't know, you could call it like spiritual awakening or clarity where she's like, but you know, I wouldn't go back and change it for anything because it's brought me to this moment. It's brought me here and I'm, I'm stronger now. And I, I know who I am and what do I want to do with my life. And she was able to get to that post-traumatic growth place, right? Where, where there's a strength. You can see that, the, that, you know, you're not just a victim of this thing. You're, you're a survivor and you're, you can empower yourself to actually grow from the experience. And she really got to that place. And I think Dr. Grant saw that a lot with his folks as well. And so then he developed this expansion brain spotting, which is really about emphasizing the positive. So it might be 
um, something like having a spiritual awakening or having a moment of just like pure bliss or love, or, you know, if you're a performer having an amazing performance, we can use brain spotting to actually enhance that and grow that. So we could find a spot that correlates to, you know, you have the person talking about this like really positive experience they had and then find a spot in their visual field that where they feel it even more so. And then they brain spot on that. And that helps them to continue to grow that good feeling or that confidence, you know, in performing or being at your best. Um, so really very creative, very lots of interesting applications, a lot for creativity, stimulating creativity um, for writers and, and musicians and whatever. Um, Dr. Grant really does a lot with that stuff. So I'm a big fan of um, his work. I'm hoping to get him on the podcast uh, someday. And you can find out more about him, about brain spotting uh, at the website, brainspotting.com. Um, I just think it's a really, really powerful technique and not a lot of people know about it. I didn't even know about it. I was surprised that this, you know, it had been around 17 years at the time that I discovered it. How did I not hear of this? And so um, part of why I'm going on live today is to just educate folks around this tool. And again, you know, you can do it yourself. I will brain spot myself. Um, but, you know, do that with caution. You know, I suggest to my, I, I only really suggest that to my clients if they feel like, I feel like they have the coping skills to deal with whatever material comes up because it is a bit like Pandora's box. We don't know what's going to come up, you know, when you start looking at that point. Um, I prefer to do it in the safety and the containment of a, of a therapy session, but, um, but yeah, if you want to find out more, um, feel free to reach out, ask me questions. Um, I'm happy to share more information and, um, thanks for tuning in today and we'll see you next time. Bye.